interesting. So now I'd like to hand over to uh, Mary Richardson, our General Manager, uh, who's responsible for leading the COVID-19 incident management team, uh, and ask her to give us a presentation uh, recognising that the PowerPoint presentation uh, may not be publicly available at the moment, but uh, this will be able to be played back with the uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, after the meeting. That's a message for the public. I think it is available to us uh, on the Hub. So uh, over to you, Mary Richardson. Uh, greetings. Can I just check uh, with you, um, uh, Mayor, if you, uh, you can hear me properly, if I'm loud enough? Yes, that's uh, perfect. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much. I'm just going to um, walk through uh, an update around uh, COVID-19, um, give a brief overview about the international context, the national status, and then the council status, and also an update on the EOC that we now have stood up. So um, as uh, the latest figures uh, for the sort of global um, status is uh, from the World Health Organization and that's data from the 29th of March. Um, and at that, that um, point, there were 750, 800, uh, sorry, 750890 confirmed cases. So 750,000 cases and 36.5 confirmed deaths. Um, the fatality rates across the world um, are differing significantly between countries, so that some countries are sitting at over 10 uh, percent and others are actually sitting lower. The most recent um, excuse uh, me, excuse me. Sorry for interrupting, Mary, but somebody hasn't got their microphone switched off. Can everyone who is not speaking, by everyone other than Mary, please switch off your microphone. Sorry for doing this. Uh, carry on. Okay, thank you. So um, just, I was just uh, talking about the fatality rates, which are very significantly across the world, um, but the latest uh, work that was just published in the BMJ, British Medical Journal, and the Lancet over the last uh, day or two. Sorry, there's it's something wrong with your line, Mary. Mary, I'm sorry, but you're, you're fading in and out, and uh, we, we need to be able to hear the information because of the recording uh, and the publication of this, the broadcasting of it. So um, I, I don't know why there seems to be fuzziness. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, no, that. It, 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 but there's a, there's a fuzziness on the line, and, and I don't know whether it's me or whether others have it as well. Yeah, I've got it. This is the point I was trying to raise with. No, I think the someone's doing it, and they haven't got their, their, their phone on mute. Can, can everyone confirm that they Can everyone put their phone on mute? It's been quite interrupted before. There's a little blue... Um, bubble. We're all used to bubbles now with a white microphone in the middle. Can you please touch on it and Thank you, that sounds better. Okay, great. So, um, uh, oh, okay, I'll keep going. So, um, I was just talking about the uh, global um, status. Um, uh, the, the slide, which is slide four in the PowerPoint presentation, presents the um, global status with the uh, EP curve, the epidemic curve, which actually shows that across the world, well, the, this um, pandemic started in China. Um, we now have USA as the epicenter of the world. Um, what's um, interesting to note is that USA had its first case only in 20, 20th of January, and two months later, it now has over 140,000 cases. 
knew, knew York is actually where uh, is the, now the, epidem uh, the epicentre of the entire world. So New York City in its own is the, is the um, epicentre and it now has surpassed China's province. Uh, China's Hubei province had 67, 800 cases. New York has now uh, close to 76,000 cases. Um, the, uh, I, the next slide actually just talks about what's happening in New Zealand. And the data for New Zealand was at 9 o'clock on the 1st of April. The da the, um, today's data will not be published till this afternoon, but that um, data uh, indicated that we now have a total of 708 um, combined confirmed improbable cases. Um, with 61 um, new cases reported in the preceding 64 hours. Um, as at uh, 1st of April, there were 82 recovered cases, which is up, was eight, up eight from uh, the day before. We um, sadly had our first death linked to COVID-19 in New Zealand on the 29th of March. And currently we have 14 people in hospital with two criti people in critical care. Um, slide six uh, illustrates the epi curve in New Zealand. Um, and uh, the data for New Zealand at the moment is suggesting that there's a strong link to overseas travel and links to confirmed cases. So that actually um, community transmission in, uh, in New Zealand uh, is only sitting at 1% at the moment. But actually that is likely to change with the decision, uh, recent decision um, about more testing. Because at the moment it's hard to actually gauge the true extent of community transmission. Um, there's probably community or possibly community transmission that actually um, isn't, uh, hasn't been detected yet. And with the increased um, uh, testing, we may well see those, that data change and we may see the curve change. Now that doesn't mean that actually things are necessarily getting worse, it just means that we are detecting more with that, with that testing. Um, I have included in slide 7 just the definition of the difference between confirmed cases, probable cases, just so people understand that terminology, and also the uh, difference in the de definition of community transmission, local transmission, and imported cases, just because I know these terms are sort of um, banded around and actually uh, just so people understand what, what I'm talking about when I talk about that. Slide 8 uh, gives a presentation of cases per DHB and you'll see in Canterbury DHB at the moment there are 52 cases. Um, and uh, I also included a, a slide that could be, uh, or graph produced by our monitoring research team and council that actually displays that across Canterbury in terms of uh, confirmed and probable cases. Um, also, the next slide, slide 10, actually illustrates that what's happening in Canterbury across the age groups. Now, this is particularly important to um, note because um, we have uh, heard a lot about the, the greatest risk of people over 70 um, and, and uh, potentially over 60 and over 70 in particular and with people's immune um, uh, issues. What we are incurring in Canterbury and also across New Zealand is actually the most cases are happening in that 20 to 29 year age group. And that uh, probably is, um, has been suggested for a number of factors. They are the most likely to have been travelling and travelled, but also the ones that potentially did not do the immediate lockdown and uh, we, uh, just tend to be more uh, connected and more um, have, uh, have a wider circle. So they are connecting more, more um, regularly or were connecting more regularly. But that's, um, that's an uh, interesting phenomenon for New Zealand and uh, CDHB. Um, and uh, I just want to touch also, people would have heard the report about the fact that there was a cluster in Christchurch um, that was, had been reported and put on MOH, uh, Ministry of Health website. Um, that cluster, Ministry of Health confirmed the presence of the cluster around a Christchurch organic uh, processing facility operated by Living Earth. 
um, the, uh, uh, just um, to like, this is actually not technically a cluster. Cluster tends to be over 10, and Ministry of Health have now removed clusters under 10 off their website. But I did want to talk about Living Earth um, because of the Council's association with it. So um, at uh, this stage, there were eight, uh, eight confirmed cases and one probable case, and that's related to the location, so it's not actually they are not all within the company, so they were they were ex um, extended uh, family in close contact with people in that company. It or, uh, originated from some uh, recent overseas travel by a family member of a staff member, um, and the waste management and living earth are uh, reported supporting their staff. But just to give confidence to um, the community and uh, people in contact, the company acted swiftly um, in line with its business continuity plan. Uh, it identified the close contact as soon as the person was identified as a suspected case. It immediately isolated the office area where the team member was based. It engaged cleaners to conduct a full sanitisation of the office and it started, and it started the self-isolation of uh, team members who were identified as close contacts. So actually, um, as soon as that occurred, um, managed it swiftly and um, at this stage there's no suggestion of any risk to any um, uh, people or uh, any further people or visitors or cl uh, customers of that area. So that's being uh, monitored closely and they uh, acted swiftly. And I want to now just talk about the national response um, that's happened and then we'll go on to what we've done in Christchurch. Um, because a lot of what we've done in Christchurch has actually also related to that national response. So people will know on the 25th of March we uh, moved into Alert Level 4, um, which uh, was uh, put a lockdown across New Zealand for four weeks. That same day we also had a state of national emergency declared uh, by the Minister of Civil Defence under the Civil Defence Emergency Act. Uh, and that uh, declaration uh, was put in place because it gives the government powers, um, powers to requisitions, uh, for example, essential supplies, powers to close roads, prohibit and regulate traffic, stop activities, and these powers will augment those powers of the Director General of Health. Uh, it's too soon to say if the lockdown measures are slowing transmission, and that's just because the lag between actually people being in contact, uh, picking up the virus, and it actually being reported in, in figures and stats. But we um, would hope that actually um, over time we will see that, uh, that the rapid uh, increase we've had daily, although it has reduced over the last couple of days, that we will see that um, start to level off. And it's at that point when actually the recovery rate is higher than the new case rate that um, we will get a sense that well, whether we're, we're on top of that. Uh, but there are significant um, risks still with travellers uh, returning sorry, to New Zealand. Sorry, you just dropped out completely then. Can, sorry, can you, can you repeat that? I think it's your line, Mary, that's not, not so hot. Um, so can you just go back and repeat that sentence again because it just completely dropped out. All oh, right. Okay. So um, uh, I was just saying that it was uh, too soon to say if lockdown measures are slowing the transmission of COVID-19 because uh, there's a lag between actually be people being infected and uh, well, it's actually being tested and reported. But um, hopefully uh, we will start. Uh, seeing that uh, levelling off of that um, epi, epi curve and um, at the point at which the, the recovery rate um, is uh, higher than the new, new um, rate or uh, new cases rate is when we actually really know we've uh, made some progress. Um, but at the moment um, we still have that risk of travellers returning to New Zealand and also now we um, uh, as I've talked about, we don't know the community transmission, but actually that, as more testing is done, we should be able to detect that. Um, we, uh, in terms of the rest of the national response, um, the domestic, as, as well as that, about borders being closed, and our domestic travel has uh, been um, 
uh, uh, restricted. Um, there's uh, sort of uh, reduction in passenger flights, and that will actually um, help in terms of it will increase the capacity of cargo for uh, air, air freight, and will hopefully alleviate some of the issues around supply chains. Uh, but it is really um, important that we do continue to message that actually there are enough supply supplies and actually panic buying and, and stockpiling isn't actually helpful at this time at all. Um, the uh, the re uh, other uh, national response which I have touched on, which the uh, 1st of April um, announced, was uh, the increase in testing so that it 30th of March, uh, we, the country had capacity to do about 3,200 tests a day, um, and that is uh, going to be rapidly uh, increasing so that by the, by the end of uh, next week, two more laboratories will join the current eight laboratories processing tests and hope to um, raise that testing capacity to 5,000 tests a day. Um, so uh, we uh, also have um, seen or will see an increase in the community-based assessment centres. So currently there are 43 active across New Zealand, um, plus 51 designated practice testing stations, but that will increase. And as you'll be aware, one is being stood up in Christchurch, um, uh, an additional one in Christchurch um, uh, that Upper Rickerton um, so uh, in terms of the health sector response, the government has increased uh, the public health funding immediately to an additional $500 million. Uh, We have had, um, as at the latest report, uh, 5,600 former and current health practitioners and care workers have logged onto the national recruitment platform. And um, this is a significant trend that's actually happened across the world where uh, recently retired health practitioners have registered and um, to, commit, you know, to commit themselves to working on this. So that commitment of, of uh, you know, uh, care is uh, incredible that these people are putting um, their, their self at risk to actually um, support the community. Um, we have no current um, indication from the DHBs that they're unable to beat demand at this stage. So um, DHBs uh, are reporting excess bed capacity at the moment, and that's largely due to the cancelling of elective surgery and out some outpatient services. Um, we, um, uh, DHBs have, you would have seen in the media recently, um, have been... Um, uh, reporting issues of frontline workers in the community with PPP um, here and more has been deployed out to uh, CDHBs in the last 24-48 uh, hours and out to uh, NGO providers as well. Um, National Healthline uh, is, an, uh, is another response. Is it the 31st of March, 12... 12.7 thousand calls were uh, answered on that day and that was compared to 773 on the same day last year. Um, and uh, so that's, you know, that's been a huge increase uh, in calls. There were some lags and delays in Healthline uh, un being unable to answer the, those calls. Um, we have been assured that the uh, treated wait times are starting to trend down but you will also see that a new health line has been stood up uh, by uh, uh, councils across the country, and uh, I'll report to that on our response. Um, the slide 18 just gives you that trend of calls into health lines, so that, that gives an indication of concern across the community um, that are uh, going in and seeking support from health line about that. Um, there's been national packages of financial support, and I won't go into the details of that, but they're summarised in page 19. They include wage subsidies, rent seizures, uh, deferred mortgage schemes, etc. Um, there's also been additional welfare support um, being put in um, to uh, both the NGO sector and the public sector um, to support um, the uh, psychosocial welfare support service needs um, that, that uh, are facing people during this lockdown period. 
uh, nationally in terms of law and order. Um, the increase of fa family harm calls is gradually increasing over the lockdown period uh, and is expected to continue to increase so police and other agencies are putting more support in there um, and, uh, that, uh, and making sure that people actually know where to get help for that point. We are also seeing issues around traffic management issues. Uh, we, are, we are incurring those both here in Christchurch and uh, nationally about um, with, uh, reduced volume on the road. Uh, some people are just driving down long side of the roads. We sometimes have road crews not doing this uh, for, um, uh, protective health and safety requirements. Here in Christchurch, um, we have communicated to all uh, all the uh, traffic management maintenance crews or people doing work without the requirements still to maintain those systems, even those cars aren't on the road. Uh, the, in terms of the New Zealand economy, um, you would see, uh, uh, meant, uh, there's a quote there on page 22 from the International Monetary Fund that said globally uh, that this will actually um, have a recession that will be uh, at least as bad or worse than uh, previous recessions, but um, it will recover um, and we expect a recovery in 2021. Um, so, uh, and that the, um, the faster the, the actions are put in place to stop the virus, as we have done here in New Zealand, the quicker and stronger the recovery will be. So it's about acting fast and um, making some quite severe actions will actually mean that the impact on the economy uh, will, will um, mean that it recovers more quickly. So in New Zealand, the forecasting is that there will be challenges throughout 2020 um, with a sizable contraction to GDP, um, and uh, that will be will have a uh, that will be larger than the recession in the 1990s and the global financial recession. But um, it is uh, again expected to recover. So a downturn um, to of in quarter two of about 15%. Uh, followed by a rise in quarter three of 10%. So overall uh, shrinking across 2020 of about 6%. Um, that, uh, and um, that, uh, that uh, agree, um, again, that sort of aggressive response potentially means uh, here that the fallout on labour and housing markets and the wider economy may not um, be as severe and may be more limited. Page uh, slide 23 just gives an indication of uh, the predictions around New Zealand D GDP across um, from 2022 to 2024. I now want to talk about Council's response, so the Council's own response to um, the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So as you will be aware, Council stood up an incident management team in late January. So actually planned early and was prepared um, for what may eventuate. So that means that actually by the time the alert force uh, was put in place, Council was actually well able and did have all its essential services established and able to be provided during that lockdown period. So those essential services included uh, all three water, water services, traffic, essential transport and traffic management services, rubbish uh, collection and oil management, and our cemetery services. Um, we uh, have all the rest, most of our other services uh, also stood up and being provided from people's homes. So those both essential and non-essential services, we had them, uh, the majority um, of those services provided from home with, but with a few, few um, ones of them who, having to be locked down in critical areas. And when we say locked down, that means that actually only those teams are allowed access and nobody else. And they are identified as essential services to be able to move away from their homes. Um, Council also, um, just in terms of the services that are, are continuing, even though they're not deemed as essential services, we have our consenting and compliance team that are continuing to process resource consents and building uh, consents 
um, uh, from home. We have a small team that are actually able to do site inspections for essential services. So that's around the new hospital, the DHB, and it's around CBAs. So that's saying we, we have an essential team that don't want to slow up uh, any resources put in place. We are continuing to um, uh, monitor noise complaints and there's some indication that these are trending up at the moment and uh, you'll be aware that we have actually uh, had references put in place for the governance arrangements um, that you as Mayor and councillors had uh, been very proactive about making sure things were in place to enable you to carry on making decisions. Uh, we uh, also across our capital programme um, uh, you'll be aware that all non-essential capital and operation works have been suspended at all work sites have been closed and made safe. That doesn't mean that those teams aren't still working, so that though all those capital teams are now refocusing on work that can be done at home and, to, and speeding up work to make sure it's ready for execution and construction of students actually alert for and we uh, as lifted and we are ma able to move into the recovery phase so they're working on design development procurement and documentation uh, preparation so we are definitely ahead of the game when things lifted and we can actually start that economy again in Christchurch or, or um, make our contribution to, to the um, economy when that um, is lifted. Uh, we also are doing um, some monitoring, make safe and safety checks on the closed down sites uh, to make sure they, are, they don't become a health risk um, and to have actually made sure that all our contractual obligations uh, are sorted and um, we are working closely with all our contractors and uh, companies uh, and providers to actually uh, keep that relationship going through the, this time to make sure they have capacity to respond to the critical essential maintenance work but also that they know we are working on the recovery and actually um, sort of we'll be working with them as soon as we are into that recovery phase. Um, around, uh, we have a, all, all our, or most of our parks open but we have closed our playgrounds so we have a few people that are monitoring and replacing those cordons around those playgrounds just to, to uh, discourage and stop people using them. We have some of our public toilets open that will remain open and that's for essential service workers and one for the homeless as well. Um, we are monitoring those and doing additional cleaning and we, we will be varying those based on the feedback from essential service workers about which toilets they want to remain open um, for, for, uh, for their sort of comfort. Um, we uh, um, uh, do, uh, sorry. I'll, I'll skip on to that. Um, if I move on to slide 29. Um, across council is that well, many of our walk-in services are now no longer available. The teams and units across there have started to rethink how we do things so that just because the building's closed doesn't mean actually the service isn't closed. And this is because of recognition uh, right back at the beginning of um, when we were planning this response. Well, if we go into lockdown, people will need still to remain connected. They'll still need to actually have access, even if they can't get physically, physical access to things. So that's contributing to their well-being. Um, so uh, we have the art gallery that actually um, has got now uh, physically closed but digitally opened. It's got uh, the vast majority of its collection online so people can go online and look at it and uh, read about it. It's got um, face, uh, Facebook pages with live talks, music and videos and updates and it's got um, some more quirky um, fun things around uh, po poets and different people reading poems to, so people can hand wash to um, some poem. We have our recreation centres that are doing online workouts. So this is actually one of our biggest hits on our websites at the moment is people going in and doing online workouts. Um, and we've had incredible feedback around that uh, from people who actually, are, um, and you'll see some of those quotes, quotes in there. 
families that are doing it, children that are doing it, and people that are doing it, uh, sort of adults that are doing it, just to actually stay fit, healthy, and, and, and connected. We also have our library services uh, that are digitally open 24 hours a day, um, and I won't read through uh, from page 31, I won't read through everything that's available there, but 50,000 titles, uh, 6,500 courses, 260 tutorials, um, free, lots of free access to a number of things and in a number of interactive things. They all, people can also get help on there about how to sign up and also how to get uh, keep, um, uh, data. So working with a um, uh, partner to actually um, get people actually connected online and, and very affordable um, uh, data access for those that didn't have broadband uh, beforehand. We are um, uh, making sure in our communications area in Council that we have multiple channels for public communication. So um, as well as our digital community uh, communication, we have stepped up our radio advertising. We are linking with key locations such as supermarkets to ensure key information is available. We are doing our weekly community board newsletters and um, we are actually doing some real-time monitoring around what requests and issues are coming in through our call centre so we can actually respond to those across social media and um, our, um, our sort of our news line and our main web page. In terms of council staffing, um, we have um, about 760 staff who are involved in the provision and support of those essential services. Almost all of those, as I mentioned, are working from home. So while they're not essential staff, they are still in lockdown and not out um, roaming, the, roaming the city or the streets. We only have a few key staff that are in physical workplaces like pump stations and treatment stations. We have all our non-essential staff now in isolation and um, they are also working and deployed onto different, uh, different activities. Um, we still have a few uh, people that, um, from our facilities such as the lifeguards, etc., who we are working with over the next uh, week to find deployment and work opportunities for them during this lockdown period. Um, as of uh, 1st of April, we had no confirmed or suspected cases of coronavirus amongst council staff, um, but we ha do have a small number of staff who's had, who have had close contact with a confirmed case, and so therefore um, we're monitoring uh, these people just to make sure they're okay. Um, we uh, have also, as you'll be aware, uh, Council stood up at EOC um, after the declaration was made and they're operating out of the Justice Precinct and uh, Council's uh, sole defence effort is actually focused on welfare needs. So um, earlier this week we established an 0800 line um, which has enabled uh, people to call in if they have needs for uh, particular um, you know, household requirements, food, uh, particular products, or else if they need more help or more support somewhere else that we can direct them to that. This um, will be a single point of entry, and um, the uh, team has actually established very quickly um, a whole pathway of how those calls come in, how they're triaged, how they're tasked out to appropriate agencies or appropriate people, and how that support is provided. So um, within a uh, very short time of that um, uh, helpline being established, there were already calls in at the moment, and large number are around um, people that are isolated um, and, that, and can't get access to food because they don't have credit cards or they don't have online services. So um, there'll be a large number of um, food provision. This, this is actually will be reimbursed through the central government uh, civil defence welfare fund. So um, we are supporting those people locally. Um, we also um, yesterday uh, did some work uh, um, to actually find uh, the um, pockets of freedom campers across our city somewhere that was safe for them to stay, that had pro uh, proper um, facilities that they could um, you know, uh, share and protect themselves in. 
So that was a um, that was work that was done with uh, the um, support of the police, but um, across our parks team and our EOC team of actually taking uh, c taking those people to um, somewhere that they could stay. And um, the uh, you know s significant I think when they arrived at the facility and they were welcomed by um, council staff and uh, made to feel valued. Um, I think made uh, was significant for those people. These are predominantly young people who are trapped in this country, can't get home and uh, were scared and had nowhere to go. So to be able to um, support them until they are able to get home was, was particularly important. Uh, we also across the EOC are supporting the uh, repatriation arrivals that come into the, into the city and have to go straight into isolation and may not have uh, supplies or food, so that initial um, support for them while they're in isolation. Um, so that's probably the uh, up to, full update of um, what uh, we're doing and what's happening. Just the um, concluding remarks, I do want to um, re-quote something that uh, the Mayor said about Council remarkable people doing remarkable things. That's all across our organisation and it's actually all across our city. So we have learnt from our experience and our, and our mistakes um, in previous instances and we're working with others to get things done. And we're focusing on our people and our city. And um, you know, it, it actually just blows me away um, how people have responded to this, and that's particularly our staff, you as elected members, but also our wider partners and the community as a whole. Um, here in Christchurch, we have a huge amount of social capital and experience around this, and we will get through this, um, and we will um, be able to recover. Um, a lot of people will be hit hard by this, but actually we will get through it and we will recover. And Canterbury um, economy possibly has an advantage over uh, New Zealand economy because of the food-centric nature and particularly um, as uh, the um, China starts to recover the actual ability to actually uh, our food-centric economy to, to then support that recovery will mean our economy will strive. But um, overall, it's... Yeah, um, you know, I think that we are we are well placed because the organisation was ready for this, and the city um, is, is used to this in a way. Um, one last concluding comment: Please don't flush your wet wipes down the toilet. So um, they are impacting on our uh, waste treatment station. That's a message uh, that's going across across New Zealand, but particularly important for us here too. So um, that's that's it. The last page just. Um, has a key contacts and phone numbers just in case anybody wants to know where where to go for all the different numbers. So that's that's uh, that's it. Thank you. Look, thank thank you very much, Mary. Um, I guess uh, you know just to repeat, you know, stay home, save lives, uh, and uh, of course the the new 0800 number. Um, uh, which uh, we were able to stand up on behalf of the uh, civil defence response, which is a national civil defence response, uh, which is being uh, we were asked to coordinate regionally, uh, right throughout the country, and Christchurch City Council is now triaging all of those calls through our call centre. So a big shout out to the call centre for uh, the work that they've done, and um, because I've uh, switching between pages and everything else. I haven't got the number in front of me, so perhaps you'd like to uh, repeat the number for the 0800. And this is just for people who are at home, who can't get out to the supermarket for whatever reason, that, that you know they don't have access to a car, they don't have access to um, a person in their bubble that's able to do it for them. They have a, a, a particular condition or anything like that um, where they need somebody to do the shopping for them. Can you just give us that number, please? So it's 0800 24 24 11. Well, that's a very easy number to remember, 0800 24 24 11. So that's great. Thank you very much. Look, I've had a few questions in, um, regarding Eco Central, but I'm not going to go through uh, any of those that relate to uh, personal cases. 
uh, we, we really do need to make sure that, that is, we get a lot of information um, very quickly. Uh, and um, there's been a number of questions that are also coming in in relation to the um, in relation to uh, the eco central decision, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, there are, there are quite a few issues around eco central, um, but uh, essentially, uh, myself and the, you know some of the directors have had some conversations with the with the um, uh, Chief Executive of CCHL and so we'd like to get an information package together for you because there are a number of issues that arise. Uh, we don't want to break people's habits in terms of utilising the, the yellow bin for just yellow bin material but people's needs for the red bin have actually increased while we're all at home, especially people that have got larger families uh, than I have, but I've certainly noticed an increase of stuff that, um, that, that has unfortunately required to go in the red bin uh, and, you know, for a whole lot of reasons that, that that's happened. So, um, uh, so I'd like to not focus too much on that um, because there are a number of issues that we'll need to find out. So can, um, and in fact, we'll, we'll probably see if we can get uh, some sort of um, update to you beforehand. We've got a council meeting for next week, as you can see from the recommendations on the paper. Uh, one of the recommendations is to schedule a series of meetings um, on, my, on the next paper, is to schedule a series of meetings. We, ha we are setting one up for next week. It has to be called an extraordinary meeting because it's, a, um, it's not sufficient notice under the standard rules. But after that, you'll see that we've set them up every two weeks so that we've got them scheduled for, um, for every second Thursday and every fourth Thursday of the month, which means that we can have a report to the council next week and we can make decisions next week. So if, if, if people are prepared to hang fire so that we can gather the information, there is financial information to consider, but there's also um, some, some very simple uh, solutions that I think we need to look at uh, so that we can uh, facilitate people during this period of lockdown when they don't have access to uh, recycling facilities um, for, a, for a number of reasons. Um, so if, if anyone wants to um, ask uh, a, a question, uh, that obviously Mary's covered a lot of ground, um, can you just send through a quick email uh, now, just quickly, just to, just not to the last two sentences, but then go to the original extraordinary council meeting and send a message to uh, councillors, to Dawn and to Joe. Um, and uh, just, just uh, councillors and mayor, Dawn and Joe, just send an email just saying question. No. There are no questions. So I, I did have one right. question, but I'm just trying to get that email. Okay. Through. Do you want me to send it through? Or? No, no. Oh, it was I'm going to ask you to, to, to give a question. I'm, right. I'm just saying, right yeah. question. So, uh, anyway, this is, this is difficult to manage, so Yanni, please ask your question. If okay. anyone else has a question, just write the word question in the, in the, right. in the subject line. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mary. Thank you for the update, and thank you for all the stuff. Uh, you know, with you and, and around you who have also been working so hard in these extraordinary times. I, I just, I'm still struggling to get a clear sense of what's happening in regards to the issue of people being isolated and having a barrier to technology. I understand that Chorus has announced some quite significant work. I, I know we have a Enable as a council and I know that there's also a partnership with our libraries with Skinny to provide low cost broadband but the gap seems to be no one's talking about the devices that people need to connect. And I just wondered if there is a kind of what the strategic thinking or planning is around the whole issue of technology and how it can be overcome. Because it seems very Sorry, fragmented um, at the moment. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, Trevor, I, have I, am I on sound? 
yes. Oh, great. So um, at the moment it is um, uh, probably not the time to get devices into people people's homes because we're isolating, so that is one of the um, reasons that the 0800 number is, is being set up so that people can actually call the 0800 number and get um, things sorted out and... Uh, and um, that some of the 0800 number will flag up that people don't have access to devices. If that can be remedied easily and safely, um, there will be some uh, indications sent up to national to see if there's a national response. Uh, if not, it, w it should be something that actually probably is worked on outside of a lockdown period. So at the moment, the, co the uh, uh, concentration... Is on, is on getting people who haven't got who've got devices and not Wi-Fi onto Wi-Fi, um, so that so that they have broadband. But um, actually, there is a shortage of devices across the country, um, and also we don't want that many people going in and out of people's homes. Thanks. And can you just clarify the criteria for people to get? I presume we, we're in partnership with Skinny through our library. So we, what's the criteria for people to get access to that? Um, it's a partnership with um, the Digital Inclu Inclusion Alliance, and that's on um, our website, or if people are uh, queried about it, um, they can ring our call centre um, number and they will be able to connect them through to our library, fingertip library staff, or, um, or be able to actually get somebody to do a call back. Thank you. All right. So thank you for that. Um, a, a, a good question. So um, Phil Major's got a question in relation to Christchurch City Council staff, which is actually a question for Dawn to answer, not for not for Mary. So um, uh, so uh, would you like to um, uh, Phil ask your question? Turning on your microphone would be a good idea. Bill so, Major, are you there? Hello, Phil. No, I can. It's Dawn here. I can see his question. Would you like me to read it out? Yes, please. Uh, so Councillor Phil Major has asked, has CCC got any staff on, staff on stand down? And then the next question is, and have we applied for the government wage subsidy for them? So in, in response to the two parts, we have some staff on stand down. Uh, what we are trying to do is redeploy as many people as possible into areas where we have demand. So I can't give you an actual number at this point, but we are working. In fact, there's been a COVID-19 note sent out through the teams uh, to specifically ask where we want to put people into, into deplo redeployment, where we've got demand for skills. We're currently doing that as we speak. And then secondly, in terms of the government wage subsidy, we are not eligible to apply for it. So Phil, Phil just sent through a note saying he's disconnected and he'll be back. It sounds like um, uh, the, the um, I'll be back uh, um, comment that's been made in the past. Um, so we'll just wait for him to come back on, but um, I'm just wondering if there's anyone else that had any questions in the meantime. No. All right. Well, look, we'll we'll, we'll circulate the answer, um, uh, Dawn, as soon as uh, yeah, we'll circulate the answer after the meter and, and uh, make sure that there's uh, an update on our, you know, rolling rolling log, um, so that people um, are able to access the answer. Um, but it's not Phil, is it? Is that Phil? Yes, it is. Sorry. Oh, um, oh Phil, Phil, um, I'll, I'll get Dawn to repeat the answer. She asked your question on, on your behalf and, and answered it because we hadn't realised you'd disconnected. I did call to you a few times. So, 
So, Dawn, can I just hand back to you? Certainly, Mayor. So, uh, Councillor Major, two parts of your question. Yes, we do have some of our staff on uh, downtime. We are currently looking at how we can redeploy them because we have teams across our central services that are requiring extra systems, plus we're working with our communities as well. So we're currently in the middle of that at the moment. And in relation to your second question around the wage subsidy scheme for central government, we are not eligible to apply for it. Oh, OK. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Right, thank you. So, look, um, I, I'm, I, I will um, move, and the first person to send me an email uh, will second uh, the resolution. So I'll just wait till I have a seconder. Somebody just hits the button and goes, second. Who's going to be the first one? Quickly. Oh, yeah, it's Sam, and you don't get an email, I'll take a second, but it might be quicker. Okay, who, who said yes? Sarah. Okay, I've got one from Sarah, so um, it's been moved by myself, it's been seconded by Sarah Templeton. I will put the motion, uh, and we do have to do a, um, a check around the council. So could I ask Joe to go through the council, please? Certainly. The Mayor? Yes. Councillor Turner? Yes. Councillor Chen? Yes. Councillor Chu? Yes. Councillor Coker? Yes. Councillor Cotter? Yes. Councillor Daniels? Yes. Councillor Davidson? Yes. Councillor Galloway? Yes. Councillor Goff? Yes. Councillor Johansson? Yes. Councillor Kewan? Yes. Councillor MacDonald? Yes. Councillor Major? Yes. Councillor McClellan? Yes. Councillor Scandrich? Yes. Councillor Templeton. Yes. That's carried. Okay, I declare the motion carried. 